Hello there yo, Davey Meister here and welcome back to another new video. Today, we will be speculating some cool and quite plausible power-up ideas for Nami of the Straw Hat Pirate Crew. Keep in mind that this video will cover events from all over the One Piece storyline and as such, a spoiler warning has been initiated. So, the Straw Hat Pirates are currently in the New World which is a part of the world inhabited mostly by the strongest of beings. As they go further in their journey, each of the Straw Hats have to get stronger in any way, shape or form that mostly suits their characters and their fighting styles. And upon analyzing Nami as a character as well as her fighting styles, there are a few power up ideas that I, as well as other fans, can potentially see happening. And one of those power up ideas is one that I believe has the potential to not only ele elevate Nami away from being part of the weak trio, but it is an idea that I believe has the potential to make Nami incredibly powerful, getting even closer to the strongest of characters in the series. The first power up idea for Nami is her unlocking the power of observation hockey. Observation hockey is pretty much the hockey wherein the user is able to sense the presence of others from a very far distance without even having to look for or at them. Observation hockey also allows one to sense emotions as well as having slight precognitive abilities. And based on what we have seen from Luffy's training with Rayleigh, it somewhat concludes that unlocking observation hockey involves training the senses that relate to the concept of observation. For Luffy, we saw that he had to dodge attacks while being blindfolded, training more of his other senses including the supposed sixth sense that everyone is supposed to have according to Rayleigh. Of all the three types of haki, observation is definitely the one haki type that would fit Nami as it is haki that is befitting of the one who observes and is knowledgeable on the weather. Her level of skill when it comes to observing the weather is incredibly high, so high in fact that even other pirates such as Arlong foresaw her incredible potential at a young age and enslaved her. Usopp is another character whose skills rely upon careful observation because as the sniper of the crew, he cannot afford to miss incredibly crucial shots. As such, he too unlocked observation when it came down to one of his most important shots yet. Therefore, it is pretty much agreeable among a lot of fans that observation is definitely one haki that Nami can definitely unlock due to her observational weather skills. The second power up idea for Nami is the power up which I previously stated has the potential to make her extremely powerful. I don't think it is necessarily an original power up idea that I came up with, as I have heard other fans around the internet talk about it as well. Although, I don't see it being talked about a whole lot. The power up idea is that Nami will somehow fuse with Big Mom's sentient thundercloud Zeus in order to become the ultimate weather sorceress. Remember how Big Mom could essentially fuse and combine with or even get in sync with her soul weapons like Zeus, Prometheus and Napoleon in order to essentially harness their full capabilities? Well, the idea of Nami's weather sorceress power up is that somehow Nami might fuse with Zeus to be completely one with the power of lightning, essentially becoming a female version of Enel. We all know how powerful and quite scary Enel was. In fact, for me personally, Enel was one of the few One Piece villains that I was genuinely scared of, especially because he was among the first Logia antagonist to show the Straw Hats just how helpless they were without the concept of armament haki. Enel's feet also established the threat level that the natural elements pose against superhumans in one piece. It is why a superhuman like Zoro could only tank two shots of Enel's lightning attacks before falling in defeat, if I recall correctly. 
Remember that superhumans can lift objects the size of freaking buildings, move at supersonic speeds or perhaps even higher and dodge piercing weapons like guns with ease and can be sent flying for miles all just to bounce back up again. Yet, despite all these feats, a superhuman like pre-timeskip Zoro, who pretty much brawls with these characters on a regular basis, can only tank two shots from an elemental attack like lightning. Now, imagine a character like Nami, who I don't even think can beat pre-timeskip Zoro, having the ability to shoot these deadly lightning bolts to damage high caliber opponents. Maybe I am wrong about this, but based on how I have observed One Piece physics to work, I am sure that even post timeskip Zoro and any other superhumans will still need to dodge lightning as again, superhumans are still very susceptible to the elements. Especially when you consider the heat of lightning surpasses even that of magma according to a google search I did. Yet, Akeno's magma attacks was able to inflict great damage onto Whitebeard. Now, I am not saying that Enel can beat Whitebeard on anything like that, rather I am just saying that based on the heat and temperature difference between lightning and magma, wouldn't Enel's lightning attacks definitely pose a higher threat to high tier characters than even magma would? Although this is assuming two things. Firstly, this is assuming that Loge users cannot increase the lethality of their attacks. For example, Akeno's magma might definitely be higher in temperature than normal magma would be after the time skip. Secondly, this is of course assuming that the high tier characters actually get hit by Enel's lightning attacks. Due to, Enel, due to observation haki and armament haki, it is pretty much agreed upon by fans that Enel would definitely not get really far in the grand line and the new world. However, it doesn't change the fact that the damage that his actual ability can cause is extremely insane. Which is why I'm definitely sure that even the higher tier characters would have to dodge the lightning attacks rather than just tank it. And the only exception I can see is Kaido and Big Mom as their defensive capabilities are just not like a regular superhuman's abilities. Like their defensive capabilities just go way higher than that. Other than the insane damage though, there is one thing that Nami desperately needs that her weather sorceress transformation idea can provide, which is reaction speed, combat speed and travel speed. It is made painfully clear against her and Usopp's first run in with Ulti and page 1 that she desperately needs reaction and combat speed. Therefore, I personally find it necessary that if this weather sorceress power up were to happen, that Nami would finally gain the reaction and combat speed that she so desperately needs. She couldn't even get a chance to hit Ulti during her first encounter because Ulti was just way too fast for her. And this speed issue is exactly one that Nami is constantly going to encounter when fighting more high end opponents after Wano. Since she already wields the power of lightning and superhumans are susceptible to the element, I think she already has the insane damage from lightning needed to put a character like Ulti down. What she needs is observation haki as well as reaction speed and combat speed to stand a chance. Therefore, her fusion with Zeus provides her with the reaction and combat speed of lightning, kinda like Killua's god speed in Hunter x Hunter or Locke's transformation in Black Clover. Um, and that's, this would definitely be a great addition. Now think about it, if Nami unlocks observation haki, then her reaction speed could technically be faster as she might unlock the ability to predict attacks. Now combine that with the lightning fast reaction speed and combat speed plus the extremely damaging lightning attacks. This is one of the few power ups in fiction that allows a weaker human level character to jump tiers in terms of power and speed. The question posed to One Piece fans is, would you like Nami to jump power level tiers by having this power up? Because remember, Nami, Usopp and Robin are not really bodybuilders or even brawlers. It doesn't really fit with their combat skills and personalities, which is why I don't think that Oda is going to grant them superhuman level strength or speed anytime soon. If we want Nami to be combat useful in the new world and a great asset, having her fuse with Zeus or having a similar power up where she gets to jump tiers using a weapon, tool or an ability might be the best way to have her in higher level combat scenarios. 
It would also be really cool too as Nami could essentially become One Piece's version of Storm for Marvel except on a lower scale. Now, the final aspect of the Weather Sorcerer's idea is how Nami would plausibly gain such a power-up. Upon thinking further about this power-up idea, there are two ways in which I could possibly foresee Nami and Zeus fusing. The first option is that they literally develop their relationship and grow their bonds. Now, I know this option is kind of too convenient for the power-up to occur, although when you really think about it, One Piece has already always hinted at and has outright shown that even non-living objects such as ships are capable of having a sentient soul, mind and even feelings as expressed through the going merry. In other words, in this fictional world, humans can establish such strong bonds with a non-living object that you can literally give it life and feelings. Then think about the concept of Conqueror's Haki and how Shanks shows that you can have Hao Shoko Haki that is so powerful that you can affect and cause damage to the very environment around you simply by exerting your will, which is pretty much what Advanced Conqueror's Haki is all about. These two events pretty much show that in the world of One Piece, a human's emotion and willpower can be so strong that it can affect both living and non-living things, causing damage to non-living things and even giving them life by taking care of and putting their best love and effort into it. Therefore, would it be that super far-fetched that Nami without Big Mom's fruit could eventually get so close to Zeus that their souls end up synchronizing allowing a fusion to be possible without Big Mom's powers? I would like to hear what you guys have to say about that in the comments below. Now, if a lot of fans would prefer that Nami does not take the convenient method of getting stronger and would rather that getting this power up involves more than an emotional sync or connection, then my second option as to how Nami can fuse with Zeus would be Brooks Awakening. Brook's powers involves the manipulation of his own soul to be able to detach from his skeleton body or to manipulate ice as his soul is supposedly cold and carries the properties of the chills of the underworld. Therefore, since awakening involves affecting the surroundings and other stuff, perhaps he could gain the power up of affecting the souls of other inorganic or organic objects instead of just his own. In other words, Brook's Revive Revive Fruit could literally evolve to gain si similar capabilities as Big Mom's Soul Fruit as the latter's abilities involves the manipulation of, of other people's souls. Therefore, what if with this awakening, Brook could essentially power up Nami by fusing her soul and Zeus's soul together, giving Nami full control over Zeus's abilities in order to become the Weather Sorceress. Or, it could be like a contract thing where Brook has Nami gain full psychic control and the manipulation of Zeus's soul by binding his soul to her own in the sort of master and servant control. It would be similar to the binding ritual that used in Black Clover between Asta and Libe, except Nami and Zeus's soul contract would be more similar to the master servant relationship between Nox and his devils. I suggested this power up method for multiple reasons. First, this idea could unfold by creating a plot avenue for Nami and Brooke to actually team up or work together. After all, while these two are indeed part of the same crew, we have never actually seen their individual relationships with each other develop that much. When you really think about it, other than the constant panties comedic joke, what moments have we gotten for Nami and Brooke to bond or to even have healthy conflict with one another? A lot of fans agree with the fact that while Brook has his moments such as his confrontation with against Big Mom, he still tends to have little screen time or is not given much to do from a writing perspective. Therefore, I not only like the ideas of allies helping each other power up using their different expertise, but this power up method gives Brook the well deserved power up and further development that we have always wanted from him. Secondly, this method of Nami gaining the weather sorcerer status does not rely too much on the convenience of her fusing with Zeus simply because of a strong bond of friendship and instead relies on her taking on the effort to further deepen her friendship with Brooke. In other words, 
Oder the rider could use this as a major opportunity to add significant amounts of development to both characters. Plus, it seems like a much more of a practical method for her to gain the power up with the help and expertise of someone who is actually skilled with soul manipulation instead of just randomly gaining a free power up, especially one that literally allows her to jump tears by a huge mile. Anyways, that is all I have for this video. Do you guys have any other power up ideas for Nami? Or do you have other practical and better ways for her to gain the weather sorceress power up? I would definitely like to hear what everyone has to say about this down in the comments below. Thank you so much for taking the time to view my videos. Please take care and stay safe and have a lovely day and I'll see you next time. Peace.